Good evening and welcome to Bulletproof, the program where you will hear from some of the giants in multi-level marketing as they share their story on how they made it even when things got a little rough. They proved themselves to be bulletproof and won. I'm Bob Coleman, your host, and today I am so honored and I'm so excited to have as my guest today a true giant in the business world, first of all, and also in the world of multi-level marketing. Mr. Spencer Iverson. Good good evening, sir. Hey, Bob. How are you, sir? Man, I'm doing awesome. I'm doing great, doing great. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of this platform. Uh, I know that you are a busy man and, you know, always moving and shaking. So let's jump right back. Let's just jump right into uh, uh, Bulletproof. And, 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 and just, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell my audience a little bit about yourself. Well, um, in general, um, I'm the son of a, of a preacher. Uh, my dad is a minister in Valdosta, Georgia. I'm a worship leader uh, where I worship here in Atlanta. Um, uh, grew up in a small town uh, called Valdosta, Georgia. Went to um, uh, school at Georgia Tech, uh, where I uh, did pretty well. I uh, got a, a patent when I was at Georgia Tech and ended up developing a, a product and taking a company public and selling it. Um, as a result of some of that activity, I uh, went on to law school, um, where after law school, I represented pro athletes in the NFL, uh, Major League Baseball, golf, basketball for the better part of 10 years. Um, got involved in the home-based business industry more than 21 years ago, and um, I have, um, I've been everything in this industry. I have been an upline, a downline, a sideline, an executive, and also uh, a CEO. So uh, now, presently, I own a real estate development company. I have a um, uh, an executive training program where I train for Fortune 500 companies and uh, traditional other traditional businesses. Uh, the platform is called Worthy of Millions. Uh, and then I have a consulting company where I consult with major league, uh, major league marketing, but um, multi level marketing companies um, around the world on how to establish uh, and build properly uh, in this space. So. Um, that kind of is a one minute Cliff's Notes version of my uh, of my background. Awesome, awesome. You know, uh, Spencer, we live in a multi level marketing world, and we really do. There's not much that a person can participate in when it comes to uh, business. I feel that it doesn't concern some type of uh, leveling of a market. And so, when it comes to multi level marketing, unfortunately. Uh, people who don't know, who don't understand, the first thing they'll say is scam or pyramid scheme. What would you say to a person like that? Uh, without being harsh, and, and Bob, you know me, you know me uh, for a number of years, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty direct person. Um, there's too much information out there today for such a, um, um, uh, for such a uh, sophomore response, okay? It's, it more comes from a lack of understanding uh, or a jaded place. Um, every business in America is a pyramid, and that's not a cliche. That's the truth, um, and that's a positive because um, uh, a pyramid is the strongest corporate structure that's known to man. It, it just is. Uh, a person's job is is a pyramid, right? So the very thing that they look back, look down on uh, as relates to network marketing or direct sales, uh, they participate in on some level uh, on their jobs. See, there's a CEO at the top, uh, and then maybe some. Uh, regional vice presidents, and then some superintendents and managers under them, and then the baseline employees who put the Coke in the Coke cans, right? Um, that's a pyramid, okay? Now, the fact that somebody can make money off of your efforts, again, that's called your job, right? That's how people get paid. When I was practicing law, uh, I didn't make $400 an hour. That's what they billed me out to my clients. I made significantly less than that, and the difference between what they paid me and what they billed me out at is called profit margin. So it's business. So when someone says it's a, it's a, it's a pyramid, uh, it really comes from a place of lack of understanding, not really fully understanding, or even having an open mind to something else, which is a travesty because, see, we live in a society now where it's becoming much more acceptable to be in a secondary business. Right now, there's data and statistics out there that indicates and shows that the average person graduating from college today will have not five jobs in their lifetime, five careers in their lifetime. You have companies that are Fortune 500 fast-moving companies right now who are celebrating the notion of having a side hustle like Uber. Now it's cool to have a side hustle. So given the state of this economy and what the president is doing amongst other things that negatively impacts your wallet, 
we need to look no further than what happened recently with the government shutdown. Wow, if you had a side hustle or another way to earn extra money, maybe so many people would not have been negatively impacted by the government shutdown. So I encourage people, if there's not network marketing or multi-level marketing or direct sales, it should be something. But you should not put all of your eggs in one basket, and that's typically the job basket. Wow, absolutely, absolutely. Well, as you know, the name of this program is called Bulletproof. And I mean, there are times in all of our careers in everybody's lifetime, I should say, not just necessarily in a business career, but there are times in life then when things just get rough. And sometimes I know that there have been days when I felt like throwing in the towel. Um, how about yourself? How do you deal with it or how do you keep yourself going? What motivates you when you have a bad day? Um, I'll put this disclaimer out, Bob. Um, uh, you know, I, I, all of the, my answer to that question comes from a spiritual place. Okay. Um, even when I'm on stage, whether I'm in front of five or 50,000 people, uh, my answer is the same. My posture is the same. Um, you know, I grew up in a very spiritual household with my dad being a preacher. So scriptures come to my mind, like raps due to Jay-Z. And I don't apologize for that. Uh, I have watched God work in my life. I've watched God work through my life. And it's not it's not a cliche. It's not something that I say that's cute. It's not something that I say to attract people to my projects. Uh, it's something I try to live. I do say, and I do put that disclaimer out there, that uh, I'm not perfect, but I'm principled. I'm not perfect, but I'm principled. And so how do I get through the, the tough days? How do I overcome the disappointments? How, do I, how have I survived some of the attacks uh, that I have been blessed to have survived? Um, it's only through the grace of God. And, 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 and really trying to fully understand what his will is for my life, uh, understanding principles like stewardship, right? God gives us certain things, but understanding that they're not ours, right? You know, I'm just supposed to be a good tenant of those things. And you, we, should, we all should be good stewards of our relationships, good stewards of our time, good stewards of our assets, whatever those may or may not be. Stewardship, we should also make sure that we have a high degree of faith. A high degree. I have irrational faith, Bob. I have irrational. What do I mean? I mean that, dude, if I walk in a room and they're raffling off something in the front of the room and there's a, a thousand names in there, I get offended if they don't pull my name out of that jar. I have irrational faith because I've watched God bring me to, through too many storms. And so every storm that God has brought me through, it increases my faith. It increases my belief. It strengthens my resolve because I know that I've been in situations that had it not been for God, I wouldn't be here. I've been in situations where I realized that had I not had the kind of faith that I read about in the Bible, story after story after story, I, I wouldn't have made it. And so I also keep in perspective my own problems. I realize that, you know what, no matter how bad I think I've got it right now, somebody somewhere got it worse. Okay, so, so, so right now I, I'm temporarily financially disabled. Right? But somebody else around the world don't have a house. So what right now? I, I temporarily, I, I don't have enough, uh, enough money to put a full tank of gas in my car. And so I got to make a decision where I go to church and where I go to work. Well, somebody doesn't even have a car. Right? So I try to keep my issues in perspective, understanding that, man, these things never say things can't get worse because they can always get worse. They can always get worse. And here's the last thing about that. You don't necessarily have to have done something wrong for something bad to happen to you. Sometimes you just need to be tested because we got to be careful what we pray for. See, a lot of us pray for patience. We pray for wisdom. And when you pray for patience, God gives you a test. He gives you a test. He gives, okay, you, you want to be, because the Bible says for the working of pace, for, for, for the trials is, and the working of the patient helps you to endure. That's what allows you to survive the test. So, 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 Bob, a lot of what has allowed me to be where I am today, however people see that, wherever they see me or view me, uh, it is a full testament, you know, to my faith uh, and my resolve and my belief in God. Awesome. You know, there's a saying that we all say in this, in, in this industry, that is, facts tell, stories fail. Mm -hmm. Can you, without getting too deep or, you know, can you share with my listening audience a particular situation or a particular story that comes to your mind where, you had to be bulletproof, bulletproof, and you kept going. Yeah, you know, um, I would say the um, third quarter of 2018, you know, was um, you know probably the most trying time of my life, of my professional life. Um, 2018 in and of itself was a bad year, you know, personally in terms of relationships. 
Um, but it was compounded by the fact that I was a victim of a professional, you know, um, assassination attempt. And I mean that in the literal sense of the word, you know, um, I had partnered with some people who I had grown to trust uh, and, 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 and appreciate. And um, in my career, I know my character was assassinated through a lie. And I thank God that uh, I've been exonerated from that. Uh, I thank God that uh, I was able to be still, but I was in a really dark place for weeks, for months, because I felt the world was against me. I was, I was, um, uh, I, I was forced to to remain silent under the threat of a criminal lawsuit. I was forced to remain silent under the threat of physical violence, and I couldn't say anything. Meanwhile, meanwhile, a path had been created where they could say anything. They could say whatever they wanted to. And knowing that I wasn't going to say anything, they just piled on lie after lie after lie. And I felt, I felt horrible. I felt horrible for the opportunity. I felt horrible for the tens of thousands of people who had come to believe in my leadership, um, the value proposition that I brought to the table. Uh, I have built major, major companies and, and have done some pretty cool things in business. And to have my character drug through the mud on a lie on somebody else's somebody else's selfish ambition, their desire to be the number one guy, their desire to have things. And the crazy, the crazy thing is, Bob, the truth was always in front of them. They never took the time to get my side of the story. Never. And yet I had to remain diligent and faithful to God and just be still. I had to go and get counseling. And, and I don't mind, I don't mind sharing that because in our community, too many people shy and you know, they, they, they turn a, a deaf ear or they frown upon, you know, getting counseling. No, I need a professional help because I was in a really bad place, right? I was left on the side of the road dead. I was, metaphorically speaking, they were hoping that their lies, their betrayal of me was going to lead to my ultimate demise. But they didn't know I had God on my side. And God was telling me, such a be still. It was too big. It was too big for me to have. It was too big. The lie was too great. And so I had two angels in my life, you know, uh, who, who I will never forget. And one of them called me and said, little brother, I need to hear your voice every day for the next two weeks. Every day I need to hear your. And every day I got up. And some days I was crying. Some days I couldn't talk. She was just sharing with me. But every day these two angels in my life from different parts of the country just poured into me. They would send me words of affirmation. They would send me these these images and these pictures. Man, you're still great. You're still that guy. God loves you. And you know whatever it is you're going to get through. I needed that. And then I started talking with this counselor, and she said many things to me. But one of the things she said that I will never forget. She said, "Miss Iverson, we've been talking for a while." And I've come to this conclusion, and she was a Christian counselor. She said, based on what I know of you, because I, I didn't know that she knew, knew of me, based on what I knew I know of you and what I've heard in this story, and I know you're hurt. I can feel your pain. You know, you, you, I, 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 I know you're hurt. But this is clearly not where God wanted you to be. And that was a, that was a blow to me at the time because I had put everything everything into the business, everything into the movement. I created the campaign. I created the marketing material. I created the book. I, I did that. And so, and so to be accused of what I was and to say you have no value, that was such a lie in and of itself. So many CEOs from other companies called and said, dude, when I heard they said that, I knew something was up. Because, Mr. Everything you do, you bring value to. But to know that, wow, and now to see where God has taken my life and how God has just blessed me above and beyond measure because I was obedient to his will. And I want you to follow this. Watch this, Bob. You see, what we got to understand is this. As, as dark of a place I was in, because I had nothing, I, I had put everything I had into that bit. I had absolutely nothing. And so to, so to, so to scrape myself up off of the bottom of the concrete and to, and to try to find out a way just to put gas in the car, to find out a way to how, how am I going to get food in the refrigerator, I had absolutely nothing. That's how big of the lie it was because what I was accused of was having an abundance when I had absolutely nothing. And they knew that. We were all struggling. We all had put everything into the business, and they knew it, but selfish ambition Greed, pride drove them. If they get rid of me, maybe we can have our own way. 
but here's what I had to resolve too. See, God shares a lot of characteristics and qualities with us. See, he shares love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, mercy, faith. He shares that with us, but there's one Bob that he reserves for himself. One, one. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Not that I hope and wish any ill on anybody, but you see, the worst thing I could have done was to go out and try to try to retaliate. The worst thing I could have done was to try to become all consumed with how to get back at people. No, I did the opposite, Bob. I did the opposite. I was working behind the scenes through my tears, sharing vital information with the acquiring company so that the transition would go smoothly. See, nobody tells that story. I was the one letting them know, hey, listen, we have a retainer with this law firm. If I didn't tell them, they never would have known. Hey, listen, here's this account. You need to know about this. But nobody knows that story. So when they found out, when two of them found out my side of the story, when they finally called, they got emotional. They got it because they didn't know. They were led to believe by this one guy that I had done all of these heinous things and they were sorry for it. Was it too late? Only time would tell because I've been scarred so deeply. But at the end of this, at the end of the day, God has just so enriched my life and I'm so much better, so much stronger, so much wiser as a result of it. And the people that God has now put in my life, the opportunities that God has blessed me with, I never would have had, had I remained in that situation. And it was tough. And I'm able to share today. Had you asked me this 30 days ago, I probably still couldn't talk about it. But God now has allowed me to, to, to survive that storm. Why? So I can be a tour guide for somebody else. Awesome. Well, that story alone just shows and it's even proof why you're on the, why you are on this call today, why you're on this show today. It's called Bulletproof. And you are indeed, you are indeed a Bulletproof individual. In the words of Henry David Thoreau, he says, if a person will advance confidently in the direction of their dreams and endeavor to live uh, the life they imagine, they will meet success unexpected in coming hours. And I think that you are definitely living proof of that. So, Thank Mr. You, Iverson, I know that you are a busy man. I really appreciate you uh, being taking time to be a part of my show today. Um, just keep being bulletproof. Keep let Keep letting God use you in the direction that he's using you. I know that you're doing some awesome, awesome things. Uh, anything that you want to share with the listening audience before we close the show today? No, I want to thank you, Bob, for of all the people that you could have considered for this platform and for your show. Uh, you thought of me, and I appreciate you for your professionalism. Uh, I appreciate you for your friendship. You tune in to my uh, motivational call every Monday morning at 830, uh, religiously, faithfully, and so I thank you for your support and for and for inviting me onto your show. It's a fantastic platform. Thank you, sir, so much. Awesome. Have a great evening and uh, God bless. You too, buddy. Take it now. All right. We were talking to Mr. Spencer Iverson, and he's, as you guys heard, he's definitely a bulletproof individual. My name is Bob Coleman, and as, a, as always, it is always my pleasure to be here with you guys with this podcast called Bulletproof. And always remember, guys, never give up. And in all you're getting, get bulletproof.